In our final example, we're going to use a skinned mesh. If you open the scene, Skinned Flocking, from the Scenes Compute Shader Skinned folder and run it, you'll see loads of birds flying around. Over in your IDE, open skinnedflocking.cs and skinnedflocking.compute from the same folder, and litforwardpass.hlsl from the shader folder. Let's start with the C-sharp script. This is essentially the same as the previous example, with a few changes. The Boyd struct now has a frame property. We'll use the frame property to select the animation frame to display. There is now a num of frames property that is passed to the compute shader and the custom lit shader. More about that in a moment. We'll also use the enable disable keyword methods of the shader to add or remove a define from the shader. If you notice that this example has a third buffer, the vertex animation buffer, then well done. <laughs> you may have also noticed that there is a new method, generate skinned animation for GPU buffer. Let's review this method here. Before the program starts, we use an animator component to set the mesh into a series of poses. Then we grab the vertex positions in the pose into a buffer. By choosing the correct index from this buffer, we can display a series of different poses of the mesh. The first thing we need is the animator component. Animations in Unity can use layers, but here we keep it simple and just use layer one. If we look at the animator, you can see that it is set to automatically play the animation clip Flap Wings. To set a pose, we'll need the state info, a new mesh to store the pose, and a couple of variables. This script has a public property animation clip, and this is set to the Flap Wings animation. An animation clip has frame rate and length properties, which we can use to determine the number of frames to bake. Because this value is going to be used so often to set the index in the vertex animation buffer to use for a vertex, it will be more efficient if this value is a power of 2. The mathf object has a useful method to set this value. Now we can get the duration of an individual frame. Next, we need to get the vertex count of the mesh. Now we can set up an array of vector 4s to store the vertex data. It is going to be vertex count times number of frames long. We're all set to grab the vertex data. We do this in a for loop. Recall that we got an any state info object, and we can use that to get the animation to play, setting the layer, and start time. Then we call update with a delta time of zero. This will update the mesh to the position defined by this animation. And now we can bake the mesh to our baked mesh object and then iterate through the vertices to store their values in the vertex array. At this stage, we have an array of vertices that we can use to set up our compute buffer. We pass this buffer to the material. The compute shader doesn't need this buffer, only the shader. Now let's look at how the compute shader has been affected. We just need to use the current speed, delta time, and the property Boyd frame speed to adjust the Boyd frame property. A faster moving bird will flap quicker. We need to check that the frame property hasn't passed the number of frames property. And if it has, then we subtract this value. So Boyd frame will be in the range 0 to number of frames. Let's look at the shader for review. It's essential that the attributes instance passed to the vertex shader function includes vertex ID as well as instance ID. Now in the lit pass vertex function, we get the Boyd from the Boyd's buffer using the instance ID. If frame interpolation is not defined, then we set positionOS.xyz to the vertex animation buffer at index vertex ID times number of frames plus void.frame. If frame interpolation is defined, then we set positionOS.xyz to a blend of the current void frame value and the next frame using lerp. The blend value is determined by the fractional part of void frame. If this is 0, then the blend will be just the frame value. If the fractional part is 0.5, then it will result in a linear interpolation of 50% frame and 50% next. Press play and see how the speed of the birds flapping their wings is affected by their velocity. So this is achieved by setting up a vertex buffer that stores a number of poses of the bird performing the flap wings animation. In the compute shader, we set the Boyd property frame to a value between 0 and number of frames. The speed at which this frame property updates is dictated by the velocity of the bird. In the shader, we get the current and next frames using this Boyd property. 
And then last, in the vertex shader, we use a combination of vertex ID and the current and next frame values to get the appropriate value from the vertex buffer. Using custom HLSL is now possible in a visual effect graph, which allows the developer to make use of shared buffers on the GPU. Find a 2D flocking example in action at this link. You can also find our updated ebook on creating advanced Unity effects in the description. In this series, we moved from using a compute shader to position single points being rendered to rendering multiple animated meshes. Compute shaders offer a great performance boost for some computationally expensive processes and are well worth learning to use effectively. 